He's gaining on us. We're running out of options. Then we use our last resort. We're gonna use the forbidden, cursed, and haunted cartridge we bought at the prison garage sale. We're gonna be stuck in there for a long time. It's better than another million if we're caught. Let's go! Take a look around. See anything? Yeah, a lot of rocks and eggs. Collected sap that looks like eggs. Yeah, looks like you're in the bug dragon den. Look over there. Maybe that will seem familiar. Oh, <laughs> it's so cute. Is that the first stage? Yeah, give it a scan. Rare Meg. It's born covered in the sap it feeds upon. The old sap is slowly hardens into a rocky exoskeleton, while the new sap is used to protect its body and as a meal. And I know these, but where's the rest of it? Inside the shell, they draw their bodies into rest. They spend all day feeding and collecting sap. Give it a scan. It collects the sap from a giant tree to coat their frail bodies. The sap eventually grants them dragon-like powers and an ever-increasing appetite. Well, it looks like dawn is breaking. Maybe I can find a way out now. Be careful. A large biomass just entered your location. Well, uh, I don't see anything. Nothing out of the ordinary. Oh my god, what is that? Um... I'm gonna leave. Yeah. Ripotra, its body coating is similar to molten tar. The reserves it stores at the base of its feet allow it to stick to almost any surface. Well, where do I begin? I guess let's start after the vote for the evolution. And I went right to concepting afterwards. I wanted something definitively dragon-like to end the line, but retaining the flight and limbs, which I felt sold the insect portion the best. After some redoing of the proportions and the head mostly, I came to a pretty close concept. However, it evolved more during the 3D stage, which we'll soon see. The head was first on the list, and I actually sculpted the base version of what I wanted in ZBrush before going into Maya. The body in the shell, the egg exterior, <laughs> was made out of smooth cubes much like the original bug dragon, but the body took some soft select movement to get it into place. The legs were made similarly to the bug dragon as well, the cylinders were gradually shaped and added until it fit the reference, and small claws were made from simple little duplicated spheres. Now that I was looking at the model, I decided to break from concept and flush out the body some more. I felt a tail was necessary to balance out the long head, and appropriately, the tail could end in the shell of the bug dragon, like a spiky morning star for attacking, and maybe a remnant of its former stage, like a molt. After learning 3D and drawing for most of my life, it's amazing how quickly I started to concept in 3D more than on paper. The wings were simple enough, and took most of the inspiration from the bug dragon, but remembering this time to add in enough geometry to be sufficient for animation as well. Our model is in separate pieces for now, but eventually these will be made into a single mesh for animation. UV map this beast and don't forget to keep everything in proportion. Texturing comes next. Not rigging, not animating. That's right me from two weeks ago. You texture before you rig, or you have to jump through hoops to make it work for a whole day. Man, live and learn. That's what Crush 40 wanted. The colors and shading scheme don't differ too much from the bug dragon, but it will all be in a single diffuse map this time instead of spread out. Also, paint some highlights and shadows a bit more generously before moving on. 
Now, now we rig, and boy, it was annoying. I mentioned last time I don't animate or rig much, and it shows because it took forever to paint skin weights and just get things to not bust apart, but eventually, we have a rig that works well enough. I added a lot more joints in the wings than Bug Dragon for smoother movement, and I added some joints along the chest so we can slightly move the egg-like body when we please. Animating wasn't nearly as bad, a lot of joint chain animations with a few exceptions, and since this is going to be integrated into Unreal, make sure to make the animation seamlessly loop. I'm ditching 3D, playing Fortnite from now on. Just kidding. We gotta go to the doldrums and make art instead. I knew this scene was going to involve central room with corridors leading to it, and more or less that's how it ended up. But we can't just make it out of thin air, we have to pride ourselves on doing what we can on our own. So we gotta make everything for our cave first. Back to Maya! In much the same way I made the original model, we're gonna make some low poly assets that fit into the cave environment. Each one went through some ZBrush detailing, substance painter, and a final touch up in Photoshop. Some of them ended up a little too low res, but we gotta move on. Now we make a scene out of random scenery, and that's been something I've been doing way longer than I ever knew how to do 3D. Level editors from Warcraft 3 and Unreal Engine 3. I messed around a lot with these when I was getting older, and I had a lot of fun with this. In our Unreal scene, we're going to use a plugin to achieve the cell shaded light and outlines as a workaround to not having those in Maya, but I like Unreal. I actually think this is going to work out for the future, so that's going to be neat. Finally, it's time to import our model. Unreal makes it really easy, and I can import animations in full packages that require only a simple drag and drop to the scene. I actually went back and animated two more sequences for the evolution, which I thought might work for the video, both being simple or adjustments to the original animation. Well, now that the evolution is in there, let's import our original bug dragon. <laughs> yeah, wait. The bug dragon is so barely put together properly that I'll actually have to redo the entire file another time before being able to integrate it into the engine. Making a Pokemon in a day doesn't mean it will be engine ready in a day. Go figure. We can import little static versions of it, just so we can decorate the scene. And finally, towards the end, Ninoche settled on a design for the Bug Dragon's first stage. It was simple enough to model, texture, rig, and animate fairly quickly, and it helped flesh out the evolution line overall. The one other thing I made before the end was a Pokedex-like device. I drew it up and concepted the idea, and then created, textured it, and hopefully I can rig it for a future video so that it will look a little bit more lively. Then it was all down to just capturing footage, and we can use the sequencer in Unreal to capture some interesting camera movements, or we can just do it directly from the in-game footage. What we're left with is a bunch of animations, a fully explorable little scene, and a heck of a lot of opportunity for the future. And I really hope you enjoyed seeing all this as well. Where will we go in this new region? Well, keep an eye on the channel and see what comes next. If you haven't already, remember to subscribe and hit the bell if you want to see stuff hot out of the 3D modeling oven. And of course, thanks for watching. Hey, can you read me? I think I found a new way out of a cave. It's just up ahead. Alright, finally! Well, I hope you can model yourself a sweater. <laughs> Spoiler alert.